Hello, I'm Bill Zogby. I'm the Chair of Cardiology here at Houston Methodist and the DeBake Heart and Vascular Center. And it's great to have with us today Dr. Hani Nejem. He is the Chief of the Division of uh, Congenital Heart Disease at the Cleveland Clinic and uh, Surgeon by Excellence. Hani, it's great to have you. Thank you so much, Bill, and it's a pleasure to be here with you. We really enjoyed your Grand Rounds today. It, was, it opened up, to me at least, uh, one, the complexity of adult congenital heart disease and what can be done about it. And, uh, and we reflected a bit as to uh, why aren't we seeing as many of these patients, particularly that some of these patients are growing in number so much. Uh, what, do you think, what do you think the problem is? Um, Lack of awareness or? I think, uh, <coughs> Bill, uh, as you have alluded to, this is a young specialty and I think it's growing uh, by the day. We know that at this time uh, we do have more adults with congenital heart disease than kids with congenital heart disease because of the rapid improvement in how we do surgery in kids that have survived to adulthood. They do come with us all sorts of different problems that are different than those with acquired heart disease. And therefore, they need a special group of people that would take care of them because they are not the usual heart surgery. They are heart surgery, but in a different way. And uh, indeed, uh, these are patients who have to have a dedicated team of expertise that deals with them day in, day out. They do identify who they are, what they do. Uh, they do identify how they present when they are sick. Because, as we've discussed this morning, is that the outcome of, of interventions, whether it is medical or surgical, is dependent on when you catch them and how you exactly. catch them. Even catheter-based surgery. Exactly, is that yes. You know, our adult congenital heart disease program has been in existence only about, I would say, six years or so. There's exponential growth in it. And I could see where the needs of the patients are because they want to be in an adult facility. These individuals are growing. And at the same time, the possibilities of catheter-based, in addition to the complex situations that you really shared with us, and at times it's just like you know, above our head as to the complexity of the situation, which speaks for hopefully that we could do it all together, more awareness in the primary care community where some of these patients are maybe lingering the cardiologists themselves and say, well, there are so many other different options for these patients and a place for innovation that you really shared with us today. And I, I loved your portion about innovation. Absolutely, <laughs> Bell. And this is where actually I think we, we can make a difference on those patients. Because when you have this dedicated team who takes care of them and are able to bring in these problems and have solutions for them, and it, it is nothing better than what you've done is create a team that will take care of them because, and you know what? You'll be surprised, you're gonna be hiring more and more people in there. And if there are, as I was, uh, as we were saying, if you're a young cardiologist around, a young cardiac surgeon, this is an area that you wanna actually learn because that is an area that will be in a great need and they are very This speaks for the group. centers of excellence that Absolutely. we talked about because you need a team. I know the heart team concept has been more put to the front because of valvular heart disease, et cetera, but this is even <laughs> where the need is. You need anesthesiologists who are comfortable with it, catheter-based specialists, surgeons, uh, Absolutely. Uh, nurses, and, and everybody else, and I think that, that's really amazing. Yeah, and, and the innovations are going to continue with this because we haven't seen even what they will present to us. You know, when you're, when you're thinking, uh, what happens to a, a, a repair tetralogy in 30 years, we don't know what's going to happen in 40 years. Well, we don't know what's going to happen in 50 years when you follow them. So this are the patients are going to continue to come in with newer problems that we have to innovate for them and how we can deal with them. I'm going to tackle two medical questions related to your grand rounds. One is the unroofing of the coronary artery that you mentioned. I think it's amazing surgery. And the question from a cardiologist's perspective is, who are these, because you see them nowadays, you see them on CT scans because CT is much more available uh, at times. Uh, I, I think that's probably most likely where you're gonna see them most of the time. 
who are the ones that should be managed medically versus surgically? And Amazing questions. I wish I have an answer to that, <laughs> but I have some insights to this. You are absolutely, you, this, is, this is a million dollar question. And you know what? We don't know the answer to this. And there's a large, uh, actually, study now going on, see, in Congenital Heart Surgeon Society, looking at this, because really, it's not even close to the guidelines. Who are the ones who are really, and every now and then still in the news. Now, we, we, you see somebody who is dropping dead, <coughs> and you would say, well, this is not fair. These are healthy, young individuals who just dropped dead. Why haven't we been able to catch them before? So there's a lot of unknowns there, and what we're trying to do at I least. I would love to, have to see a registry or something. Exactly, these exactly. Because, because compared to the other much more complex <laughs> things that you shared with us. Exactly. This is either you do this or that, and it is simple. Exactly. Rather simple. Totally agree with you. It is a simple and an enjoyable operation, and it does the job. So the question is how? You know, I think there have to be a systematic approach for those. And it's not enough to say, well, well, he's done fine, he doesn't know. I think there have to be unfortunately some invasive testing that has to be included. As you've indicated very clearly now with the CT engine, we're seeing more and more of them incidental. Yes. Are you gonna actually sit on them or not? Which are the dangerous ones? Which are the, and I think we should be able to res resort into more in invasive. I think pressure wires have to be included in the investigation. We're trying to do this now prospectively, yes. seeing whether that actually would uh, give us some insights on PET scanning is important. But it's gotta be also, it's gotta be something during stress because- It has stress. stress. I mean, you could do something at rest, but stress is the big inducer here. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. The other question is a difficult one is, you talked about the Fontaine and its issues and the innovation and the surgery is, and you're seeing patients rather late in their course, when is the optimal timing conceivably to start addressing this? Okay, very important question. I think if the kid is born with two ventricles, but what's labeled as unsubtitable, we should route them into a congenitally corrected transposition uh, physiology, which means that we we harness the left ventricle as being a subprimary ventricle right from the outset. We've started doing this actually at, at, uh, at the clinic. And why is this? <coughs> because you want to stay away from the single ventricle uh, uh, palliation. Now, not everyone will have two ventricles and you're gonna end up with a failed uh, univentricular circulation with venous hypertension, all the problems that comes with it. And I think it is important that we identify those patients before they start having end complications as in protein losing enteropathy right. and plastic bronchitis and liver failure and so on, and have an intervention before that. There are a lot of in process now, whether you need to use an assist device, and I think before they start, because we know transplantation for failed fontans is not a great idea, yes. and they don't do as well as the others. So you wanna identify them before, you wanna make sure that you route them into a track that will lead them into a successful transplantation, otherwise they're doomed for failure. So these are a complex group of patients, and you know what? We're gonna be inundated with those patients. There are more than 1,000 Fontans every year. You could just add them up. There are more than 50,000 now done, so you can imagine how these patients are gonna to continue to rise and will we'll flood our systems, really. <coughs> no, I think it, it just you touched upon the magnitude of the issue today and the complexity of it. Certainly not coronary disease here, and, uh, and I think it's gonna get more complex, so therefore people with expertise just like yours and grooming the next generation of physicians, be it the cardiologist interested in, in, the, in the field, as well as the surgeons. There aren't too many people going into surgery, so uh, and ideally, you know, this is a, a niche for, for future growth, and I think that's very much needed. Absolutely, and you know what? Even for administrators, this is a good business model, to be honest. <laughs> it's true, it is an area that will have your interventional cardiologist work more, your electrophysiologist <laughs> work more, <laughs> your imager work more, and your surgeon work more, <laughs> provided you can offer this, because there's a huge armamentarium of procedures that you could do for those patients. So as even a business model for any enterprise, it's an amazing area yeah, that you can true. grow and you can guarantee that you will succeed. So uh, indeed, what you've said is correct. 
is create the senses of excellence and grow it and feed it in a way that you could actually serve these patients. Sunny, it's, it's so good to have you and it's share your wisdom, well. your experience, and your innovation with us. And I think uh, it's really been amazing. Grand Rounds, I would, I would urge you to take a look at this Grand Rounds and, and look into innovation in your own center and yourself, uh, what you could bring to the fore. So thank you again and look forward to seeing you again uh, next week or another channel. Thank you.